Today we're going to be talking about password safe cache. And first we're going to look at the password safe cloud architecture. So password safe cloud lives in Azure cloud. You would deploy cloud resource brokers in your cloud providers, or you would deploy the resource broker on prem in your data centers that have connectivity to those managed assets and systems that we're looking to store and rotate the passwords for. Now, if say an earthquake happens, a volcano happens, you lose complete internet access, you know, worst case scenario, you can't get to password safe cloud. We have what's called a password cache. And what this does is every five minutes, it'll go and grab the most recent passwords from password safe that you tell it to. And this can be deployed into Windows or Linux operating system. It can be physical or virtual. And it's primarily for a break glass scenario, or you can use it for API access. So you're not bombarding the password safe cloud appliance with all your API calls. You can set up a password cache server for all your developers to hit your AP, your password cache server with all their API calls. One or many can be deployed in multiple regions or locations. We don't charge any additional licensing. You can have as many password cache servers deployed as you feel comfortable with. Just a few quick bullets to discuss password safes, password cache. So password cache is a lightweight proxy for the password safe API, providing high performance throughput for password requests. You run this as a spe specified password safe user. Password cache makes view password type requests to password safe for all managed accounts that it's been given access to via our role based access permissions within password safe. And caching the return system and account details, requester details, and any other credentials in the same encrypted format that password safe stores it at in AES 256. API calls to the password cache server serve locally cached data. Requests are refreshed every five minutes or sooner if a request is due to expire before that time. If communication with the server is lost, the last known good credentials are served up from that local cache, even if the associated request has expired. Our supported operating systems for password cache are anything above Windows Server 2012 R2, and for Linux, Red Hat or CentOS 64 uh, version 6.8 and above. So here I've installed password, safe password cache on a Linux CentOS box with the host name centlin122.ef.lab. You can see this is a VMware computer the CentOS Linux version 7. And first we're going to check the status of the service. And so after install, the system CTL status, and the service is PSPCA. And there you can see it started and executed after configuration. And so if I want to check out the log, I can come over here and I'm just going to copy and paste the log location is in var opt pbps log pspca.log and just the last 20 is going to show me that there are a single there is a single credential available and here it looks like Someone has accessed password cache from a dot one, two, three address. Here's the account they accessed and the system they accessed. So it'll show logs from previous API requests as well as what logs or passwords it's retrieving successfully. After clearing the screen, we're just gonna jump to OPT PBPS. And then within there, you see we have a break glass.sh, a PSPCA, and a PS run to. 
And so within here, we have what we need to extract passwords that this password cache has been given access to, all locally on this system. And so to initiate the break glass script that we have on here, I'm just going to initiate that command. And here you see it'll, without providing parameters, it'll show you what systems and what accounts that you have access to that you've provisioned this password cache access to. And so, of course, we get an error. It's looking, it's going to require us to enter in this information here because that's the account and password that we want to retrieve. So it hasn't returned any, any passwords yet. But so if we pass that same script, but now we take this host name, or sorry, the account name first. And then I'm going to grab the system name. And there you can see we've returned not only that same command and what we have access to, but also that specific account name that we've entered and the system name you see there. And this is the password for that account on that system that we were able to access all locally within password cache. Now let's take a look at that break glass script we're running. And you can see all this is doing is running that PS run that we saw earlier in the folder. And here you see we are running local and it's passing the API key. And then it's passing the specific username Get it over there. Here you see the username EF API VS code. That's the user provisioned and role based access within password safe. And they're getting the managed accounts, and we just put them in some columns there. And this is where it takes that account name and system name, and then it just and puts it into that second line below here and saying, hey, there's those two variables. Same API key there, same username. And that's how you're securely accessing password safe or password cache, whether it's in the cloud or locally, you're able to access your credentials over API with a simple API key and a username all being provisioned with role-based access on password safe cloud on the back end.